Good morning and welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today is uh, going to talk in, uh, about the Nigerian inflation rate, where of course the National Bureau of Statistics has made uh, revelations that it has dropped 0.37% consecutively in the last uh, seven months of uh, 2021. We're speaking this morning with an economist, Mr. Richard Inoyo, uh, to understand better what this means. Good morning, Mr. Inoyo. Mr. Inoyo, good morning. Can you hear us? Yeah. Uh, good morning. How are you doing? We're very well. Thanks for yeah, joining good us. Good morning. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Yes, now we can. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, so, so let's get straight into it, you know, and understand what exactly this means before we look into further details. W what does this mean to the average Nigerian when the NBS says that inflation well, rate... That's Yes. Can you hear me, Mr. Inoyo? I can hear you. Please go ahead. All right. So I'm, I'm asking, you know, if you can break it down for the common Nigerian. What does it mean when the NBS says that inflation rate has dropped by 0.37% consecutively? Uh, what does that really mean? Richard Inoyo, can you hear me? All right, I can hear you. Please go any, ahead. What it simply means issues, is that uh, we can actually selected. buy more goods now. That's what it means. And it simply means that with your money, you can actually buy more goods. It simply means the price of goods and services is cut generality of Nigerians. That simply means if before you, as you used to buy a particular item, I, it simply means right now that item will be so low. So on the overall for Nigerian people, it's good. But I'm not so sure it's good for uh, uh, some persons who are investing in the market because for them it's all about maximizing profits. So the drop in price may not really reflect as in so well with them. And also it could also imply uh, that uh, they may have to start thinking of other ways to see how they can actually keep up as a revenue to their business. And if that is not the king, they may end up laying off as in uh, staff. But on the overall, it's good for the Nigerian people. That simply means you can actually buy more goods with very few amount of money in your wallets. Okay, but uh, let's also, um, you know, dig further. Do you think that this is a true reflection of uh, the market reality? I mean, looking at the fact that food prices and the cost of services are surging across the country. Well, let me start by saying the Nigerian inflation rates, uh, it's more like the uh, stock exchange markets. Today you have the price of stock going high, tomorrow you have it coming down low. So oftentimes the overall impact is not seen, okay, in the day of declaration. But I think it's going to take a whole lot of work on the part of CBN, on the part of the investors and also Nigerians to sustain the fall a price of goods and services. But I think the average investor want the price of goods and services to even go high because that way they make more money. Okay, so they'll have enough money to pay their staff for every investment they put out there. But for the average Nigerian, what we care about is to ensure that we're paying less. Okay, okay for services and, and goods out there. So for me, I believe it's a good thing in terms of the value of the research finding and reports, it is up for economists across the country to actually conduct a third party review as a research so as to either confirm or discredit it. But as it is right now, we're yet to have data to suggest in the real sense that what uh, the, the, as a, the Bureau of Statistics actually said is true. Okay. Um, also speak further on um, what really determines whether inflation rates increases or decreases. And, and is, is there things that you would say the CBN has done that has made it continue to decline, according to the NBS, over the last seven months? Well, first, let me start by saying uh, the inflation rates basically reflect to some extent the culture of demand and supply, how much people are buying and how much people are selling. Outside the fact that the volume of money in circulation 
could go a long way to actually influence what I call national spending from the angle of positive income. But on the overall, one would say that the policy of the CBN to some extent might have contributed in this direction through probably the uh, the low scheme, the CBN bonds, not only just to financial institutions, okay, where as in financial institutions become credit solution as an administrator, giving SMEs as in cheap loans, just a single digit of 9%. I still think that policy might have played out in terms of epping investors and manufacturers to produce more goods and that we force the price of goods and services downward. So, yeah, we could, we could have that link, but also it could also be that Nigerians are not basically buying because they don't have the money. Because when the demand is not high, the price of goods naturally falls. As the price of goods basically responds high, that simply means our disposable, okay, seems to... Uh, be very weak and for that reason we're not buying so investors have no other reason other than just fold out as and bring down the price of goods so as to accommodate as a more as in purchase from different as in demography so it, it could be in one direction it could be in the other direction but overall i still think the policy of the cbn in respect to offering cheap loans to as an xmes to some extent might have contributed to this drop in uh, the inflation rates Okay, but you, you mentioned that, uh, you, that uh, the implication of the fact that 0.3% uh, in seven months means that we can, Nigerians can actually buy uh, things, I mean, they can buy goods and services at a very affordable rate. But I, I really would like to ask, is that the reality? Is it really true or this is just in paper? Richard Inoyo. Well, we seem to have lost connection with Richard Inoyo, yeah. uh, hoping that we can actually connect. But, you know, it brings us back to the conversation that for every other time... I'm you, with you. No, no, I'm with you. I think the next talk is a little bit poor. Yes. Okay. So if you can hear me, please, can you um, respond? Just like I said, basically, uh, it simply means that we can now buy more goods, but buying is the function of how much disposable you have, okay, how much money you have within your wallets. And if you don't have enough money, that simply means that even the benefit that comes with the fall, a price of, of goods and services, you won't be able to find nested. So that's just the truth about it. But I believe that government spending in Nigeria as a whole is very weak. So we have to look for a way to increase the amount of money we have in circulation. So that way Nigerians can actually have more money in their, as in pockets and wallets, and then use the same to actually drive the economic growth we need. So but the fact that we've had falling rates in terms of the inflation rate does not really suggest that we're going to have more people buying. What is going to actually drive, as in purchase, upward would be a bit of money in the hands of Nigerians. As long as we have uh, an unemployment rate that is around 33.1%, and where a lot of Nigerians, where about 23 million Nigerians don't have jobs, that simply means that those who don't have jobs won't even key in to this very benefits we've seen. So it's just a function of how much money you have in circulation, not necessarily uh, the, the opportunity that the, the, the drop in inflation rate actually brings to all Nigerians. So you're saying that it has nothing to do with the cost of, um, you know, the cost of uh, food and services, the prices of food and services. That inflation has nothing to do with that. So this reduction has nothing to do with the fact that, you know, um, me going to buy, say, bins, rice, the price would have actually reduced. Well, what I'm trying to say in a real sense is this. I'm saying it's a good thing that we've had falling rates, but this falling rate can be as a real of several other factors. One, it could be that uh, Nigerians are not buying so much. And when people are not buying so much, what that implies is that investors would want to look for a way to stay in business by reducing the price of their goods and services. That's what it means. It could also mean that the, the federal government has done so well by providing the capital solutions investors need to push the factory positions to new heights. And that simply means flooding the market with cheap goods and services and then getting Nigerians to buy. Okay, so it's just two ways as in two-way thing. We're yet to actually get direct uh, theory or what you call thesis to back up why we're having this fall. It could basically mean several things. So uh, the routes uh, to get into the points where you have lower inflation rates could be as, as a result of general demand being very, very poor. Or it could also mean that investors seem to have more money and increasing the capacity of production seems to push the price of goods and services downward. 
All right. What are the things that you could you would say the government may be able to do to ensure that this uh, uh, decline continues? Because we're currently at about 15.99 percent. Um, in what ways can the Nigerian government assist you know the Nigerian economy to ensure that inflation continues to drop? Well, well, <coughs> well let me start by saying there are several things government can actually do. Okay, government can actually improve on our investments in capital infrastructure. Okay, the truth here is that there's a research I'm currently overseeing, and that very research shows that Nigerians seems to have high human capital intelligence. That simply means we're not in short supply of intelligence. What we have currently is that we don't have the right budgets, okay, and the right parity to empower Nigerians to do better and to increase our production line and expand our production, production sequence. So what government can actually do first is to invest in infrastructure, energy as a sector, see how we can improve our energy quality and get regular energy across domestic, residential, industrial markets. That is one for me. Two, I think the government also needs to focus more on creating the right correct solutions for young Nigerians and entrepreneurs out there who are passionate about bringing their vision into reality, especially as regard the creation of essential goods and supply. So government can actually look into that direction. Then I think lastly, what we all just need to do is to ensure that we strengthen our judiciary. It's very important for us to have strong judiciary because at the end of the day, if uh, you can't get justice, probably through your investment or let's say the tax given to you is very high, you cannot get justice in local courts. It also impacts negatively on how you view the Nigerian economy. So strengthening our domestic markets in respect to building the right energy sequence, increasing as in credit solution to uh, Nigerians who want money to actually expound or invest into their own business and totally strengthen the Nigerian judiciary. All of this, I believe, to a very large extent, as it would go a long way to improve on bringing the inflation rate down. At the same time, also strengthen our security, because if at the end of the day, farmers can't get the security they need to produce crops, that simply means the price of goods, as in, in the area of agriculture, would keep increasing. So I'm just of the view that the way to go is for us to see how we can address all of these issues we've raised improve our energy sequence, invest in the capital market in respect to credit solutions to entrepreneurs, improve our judiciary and strengthen national security. Okay, well, let's also go back to uh, some of the things you have mentioned. You talked about having a better budget. Uh, can you please, for better perspective, explain what you mean by having a better budget and how that can help you know, the decline in inflation rate? Now, first, you see, uh, the budget basically is not just a legal instrument, as we all are told. It's not just a legal instrument. It's basically the roadmap, road, roadmap for implementation. It is a reflection of the power readings we have as a country. And it goes to show to a very large extent what and what we're supposed to expect based on what we have on paper. So the policy sitting on domestic uh, policy documents basically means that we all just need to understand that if we get our budgeting rights and our financing right, that simply means that we can actually build new economic centers, expound our mineral district, and then increase the overall economic supply system we have in the country. But if we end up prioritizing the wrong things, like for instance, look at the budgets being proposed, 19 billion naira for software. For me, it does not really make sense. We can put that money to build what I call as in data and software development center. And then we can generate more software for Nigerians rather than spending that money on just software. It does not, it goes to show that we don't have the right parity as a country. Okay, so budgeting the right way simply means consulting citizens, finding out what citizens actually want, and then creating the right as in system to allow those things to come to bear. Currently what we have basically are state actors who seem not to care about what the citizens need and so they're just making priorities in a way that basically annoy or probably angers the citizens. So I feel that what we need basically is to fix our budgeting sequence, ensure that we are actually budgeting based on programs, projects, plans and proposals put forward by citizens and not necessarily just few persons in highly placed as a sector deciding what the country should look like and not even listening to the generality of the Nigerian people who wants to see better infrastructural investment and then a better as a national security outlook that gives us what I call the privilege to actually have access to inflation rates that is lower than that of other countries and then bring investors to do what we expect investors to do to improve on production and supplies. All right, great thing you've brought in the Nigerian people because that's where I'm going next. 
Um, when Nigerians read these things in the pages of the newspapers, they really have no idea how to relate with it because if they go to the market, uh, the price of uh, foodstuff is still pretty, pretty high. And so can you share your views on how Nigerians are coping um, with you know, the cost of living today and the value of their Naira while the government tells them that inflation rates are improving and they're getting lower? Race. I think in 1976, there's a professor somewhere around, I think, Bangladesh, that said that it's not just enough for us to actually code economic statistics. We need to actually translate those statistics into real-time development for people and to improve as in the quality of life they have. I agree with you. Uh, but the trick here is that Nigerians are not finding it easy. Even though this government is going around telling the old world that uh, Nigerians are enjoying the government and things seems to have improved. I have not really seen re-improvements, okay? 30 years ago, I was a little boy, I used to scream off Nepal, okay? 30 years plus, I still see kids in my neighborhood as in scream off Nepal. So that simply means that we've not been able to even address an energy problem that we've had for more than, as in three decades. That's one. And so if you look at our production line, we don't really seem to have so much producers basically in this country. Most of the things we consume, from our cars to our television sets, our radio, and what the view are basically imported. That simply means we're creating jobs extra. So Nigerians are not really finding this government uh, in the shape the government basically thinks the government basically looks in. So I, I would suggest that uh, the better thing we all can actually do right now is to continue the conversation, okay, keep information going to quarters where these informations can have the most impact and then get the government on the pressure to do more because there's always room to do more. And that is just what I believe. In terms of lifestyle, quality of life we have in Nigeria, I don't think it's something that we all should basically be proud of. From our road network, we have several potholes in local cities and, and communities and urban centers to our poor, our investment in our culture is one can really say Nigerians seems to be enjoying this very government. All right. So we're being joined by Justin Chuku uh, this morning. Uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Sorry, the name is Johnson Chuku. Johnson, Johnson Chuku. not Justin. Okay. Uh, thank you, Johnson Chuku, for joining us this morning. Uh, let's get straight to this conversation. We're looking at the Nigerian's inflation rate. And according to the reports by the National Bureau of Statistics, it's been dropped by 0 0.3%. 7% and that has gone on for like seven months very straight. Now, some persons have queried the methodology of the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics because if you want to uh, compare the current reality of the market, the prices of goods and services are still, uh, you know, skyrocketed. And that's not, uh, you know, we can relate with the actual reduction, 0.3%. It really sounds and really feels very good. So but, but what do you think is the methodology of the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics? you have an idea? Yes, I do. But let me clear uh, uh, one misconception about inflation rates. And that will obviously resolve the concerns of uh, Mr. Nassani who have about the rate of inflation. There's what they call disinflation and there's what they call deflation. Uh, what we are witnessing here is de deflation, um, which means the rate at which inflation rate is increasing has moderated, is moderating. What that means is that the previous month of October, uh, uh, September, inflation rate grew by 16.63%. That, what that, to put it in the layman's language, if you take an average basket of goods and services in September 2020 and, and take their prices and compare those prices with the prices of similar products in the same basket uh, in 2021 September, it simply means you would have had an increase of 16.63% in September. <clears throat> so if you have a, a basket of goods that cost you 100 naira, by September last, I mean September last year, but September this year, it, had, it would cost you 116 naira 63 kobo. Then similarly, when you talk of a basket of goods and services that you had as of October 2020, and you compare the price of those same basket of goods as of October this year, the price would have moved an average of 15.99%, which means if you have bought, bought those baskets for 100 naira, you will spend 115 naira 99 kobo to buy the same set of goods and services. So what Nigerians are witnessing is that you are seeing inflation rate is still high, 
But at the rate at which goods and services are increasing, the price of goods and services is increasing, is not at the same pace at which it was it increased the previous month. It's like a vehicle that's running at 100 kilometers per hour. Then this led to 80 kilometers per hour. It's still running at a high speed, but it's not the same speed. So you will still have the impact or speeding in case you have an accident, which is what Nigerians are feeling. They are seeing a deterioration in their, uh, the purchasing power of their money, of their income, but that deterioration is, low, is deteriorating at a lower rate. Not that it's no longer deteriorating. What they used to buy, they can no longer afford to buy with the same amount of income. But the rate at which that deterioration is, 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 is gradually weakening. And that's what Nigerians have to understand. That's the difference between deflation and disinflation. In terms of deflation, deflation, which is when people are saying inflation has declined, so they are thinking that when we say deflation. Deflation will mean that if you bought a basket of goods and services for 100 naira, the same time, this time last year, now you are buying for maybe 90 naira. So the price of goods and services have actually begin, began to go down. All right. that, that, that's, a, that's a pretty interesting well, that's way not of, what we're witnessing. of breaking it down, uh, deflation versus disinflation. So it's not like a lot really has changed. It is just that the pace with which it is going bad is slower than it was um, you know, Absolutely. in the past. <laughs> okay. All right, <laughs> Mr. Chukwu, let's, let's talk further about, you know, how long, you know, the, you know, the, the reality on ground um, when the NBS puts out these statistics and these figures, how long on the average do you think it takes before the Nigerian might start to see that there's actually a difference in the price of uh, goods and services? When you talk of how long it takes Nigerians to realize there's a difference in goods, the price of goods and services, the Nigerians actually feel it before the NBS publish it. Um, Nigerians go to the market on a daily basis and they change, they realize that there's a change in the average price of goods and services. Take, for instance, the report from MBS for October inflation. They, on average basis, the price of goods and services increased by 0.98% between September last, September this year and October this year, within a month, month on month. So you realize that even Nigerians who go to the market, if you take a whole basket of all the goods and services measured by NBS, you will realize that the average price has increased by 1%, that's 0.98%. But because these price, the price increases are not uniform, unfortunately, the item that most families consume are increasing at a higher rate. And that's why if you look at the NBS figure, you realize that food items, which is a major component of household consumption in Nigeria, increased by 18.34%. So for that, on an average basis, a family will have realized that the value of goods they naturally, naturally buy, buy it has almost increased by 20%, and they will feel the impact on their pores. So in as much as we're saying all item inflation increased by only 15.99%, an average household would have witnessed an increase of close to 20% on their expenditure costs because food items increased by 18 0.34%. And so the average family on going to the market daily basis, they are the ones that feel the impact of price changes. They actually didn't feel the impact before NPS reported it. NPS re reported it based on historical facts. Somebody go to the market today, measure uh, the impact on the goods and services they buy in today, and then NPS report these figures by the end of uh, by this time next month. So the average people are the ones who talk, uh, who, who actually feel the pain, who actually can give you what the market trend is. And because if you look at the basket of goods and services consumed by an average household, the, there is high dominance of food items because of our level of income. And that's why most people find it, are feeling the impact of uh, uh, this inflation before even the NBS reports it. All right. Um, Mr. Noyo, can you still hear us? Yeah, I'm with you. Please go ahead. Okay, sorry. We uh, took a I'm with you. Go ahead. All right. So I, I want you to you know, respond you to this, and we may you know, also get... Um, uh, Mr. Johnson Chuku to also share his thoughts on this one. Um, what can be blamed, or can, can we still blame COVID-19 uh, for Nigeria's inflation rate and where our economy currently is? Is that something that can still be blamed? Um, if no, then what else would you blame as a factor um, in you know this um, inflation figures? Well. We can't actually sit down and say COVID-19 is still influencing the economy domestically, no, because if you look across the country, we've lifted bound on 
several protocols that basically kept people at home and businesses not doing what they want to do. So I can't really link uh, the current situation we find ourselves in to COVID-19. To COVID I believe that our budgeting from the one is wrong. Okay, we don't put the right parry. I, I, I have made it clear, time without number, that the quality of reality you're going to have in any country, the function of the quality of budget and parity is the country make. So currently, I'm not saying that as in parity in, in the right direction. So what we're just saying is basically uh, parity in the area of meeting the needs of some very highly placed as in persons in Nigeria. It's not necessarily designed to drive the Nigerian economy in the right direction. Just like I did mention, we have a budget where 19 billion was spent on software. I believe that with 19 billion, it's not, it's not as if I believe, I know with 19 billion we can create uh, a software development center where we can produce all manner of software we need to be able to drive whatever interest we might have either in national security or in production line or in public surveillance. So, I don't even think uh, the problem we have is linked to COVID-19. On the overall, we have a very weak uh, political institution that seems not to be driven by anything in respect to building the economy we need, but seems to be driven by just excuses. So we just have to go back uh, to policy documents and find policies that can actually work for the Nigerian people, for the Nigerian country, and then see how we can actually use that to rally our people to better reality. Uh, Mr. Chuku, do you, do you agree? And uh... Um, the same question to you. Do you think that COVID-19 can still be blamed somehow, some way? Um, or are there other factors that the Nigerian government has, you know, failed at uh, that has led us to continue to be at this uh, stage uh, with inflation? Well, I, I would think that uh, in as much as you may still have um, some uh, uh, effects of COVID, but I don't think there is a major factor now. If you look at the inflation figures we are talking of, you realize, like I said earlier, that food inflation is 18.34%. If you disagree with food inflation, MBS said that the major increases in food inflation were from food, food items like cereals, wheat, bread, um, tubers, including potato. Potato, tuber, and other tubers are produced locally. And uh, egg, ordinarily, we should be self sufficient egg, and I'm not sure we're importing egg today. Uh, so you wouldn't look at the food inflation of 18.34% uh, and ascribe it to COVID. Uh, and Principally, the reason why we are still having high food inflation, particularly as it relates to tuba, which is our main tuba and cereals, which are our main uh, staple food in this country, is because we've seen displacement of farmers in some of the farming boat belts as a result of heightened level of insecurity in the country. We've seen logistic costs quite high because uh, fuel price is quite high today. If you look at the price of AG, um, AGO, which is diesel, which is a major f f uh, fuel source for the haulage vehicles, you, you, you recognize the fact that that's impacting on the cost of uh, food items, even as you look at urban and rural inflation. Urban inflation is up, up 100 basis points above rural inflation in the country today. Then if you look at the non-core uh, the uh, core uh, inflation, which is uh, all items excluding volatile food items, you realize with an inflation rate of 13.24%, that will largely be driven by the exchange rate. We've seen a deterioration of exchange rate yes. in the past. We've, at some point, we saw exchange rate about three, 570 naira to a dollar. So that pass-through effect of that high exchange rate will uh, certainly have impacted on core inflation. So, and these factors are largely uh, endogenous to the extent that look, your inflation, your exchange rate is a result of your reserve and your import and export earnings, and your food inflation is a result of the level of food production in your country because most of the food we eat are locally grown uh, food items. Okay. Um I, I would also ask, it would be a two-in-one. I mean, this question will go to you and Richard in all you. Now, in all of this, in all of this conversation, the common man is concerned about improved standard of living. And if all that we constantly say there's a decline or there's an, an increase, how is the standard of living of the people? So my question now is what can government do? Because um, looking at the reality, I mean, going to the market and, you know, being on the street, you would actually feel the pains of Nigeria. The standard of living has dropped drastically. What can government do? What can the people do, you know, to improve the standard of living? Okay, uh, what the government has to do is address the factor that uh, propelling high inflation rates. I had mentioned in the level of insecurity is worsening. Uh, food production and also leading to low productivity in, in, from the farm produce. 
which is why we have a, a full inflation of 18.35, percent Beyond that, we need to address the uh, logistics supply uh, chain in the country, particularly uh, infrastructure that support logistic uh, logistics in the country. The seaports uh, are a nightmare. Uh, these are lead to increase uh, in the cost of goods that come into the country because of the cost of demolition and what have you. The road network is very weak. That leads to high cost of transportation and the absence of red transport in most locations. So that's one. The government has to fix those things to have a single digit inflation. We must address the issue of insecurity to have a lower level of inflation. And then, as it relates to import uh, induced inflation rates, uh, then that you have to look at your exchange. Of course, luckily, we have seen some moderation in, in dollar rates in the country. We hope that trend will continue and that will translate, obviously, in lower cost of imported items. Uh, but as per what we need to do. The fact is that there are two things that are impeding uh, the standard of living on Nigerians. One is high rate of inflation. Two is unemployment. And that's why we have a very high misery index. Because when you combine unemployment and, and, and the high inflation rate, you have a, a high misery index. So we need to address the issue of uh, unemployment. And that once you address the issue of unemployment, you also address the issue of productivity because higher productivity means, means, means that you are producing more goods and services in your country. And when you have produced more goods and services in the country, you realize that inflation would naturally moderate on its own. So the government has to focus on these key issues. All right, Rita, you know, you do you share the same thoughts? Well, I actually do. I actually do. But let me start by saying uh, infrastructure right now. Uh, what we have is just 20th century infrastructure. And what we need is 21st century infrastructure, from the energy line to the transportation system, down to a medical facility, and what the view. All of this just needs to improve. But unfortunately, the government is not prioritizing uh, in, in the right direction. So uh, I strongly believe that what people can do, basically, is to start calling on political parties to start holding the right ideology. We want to see manifestos, we want to see real things, and not just young people telling you they're going to do this and do that. So you should be able to engage them, interlock the issue, and get them to tell you how, and all of that. Then Nigerians also need to realize that even though they feel to some extent that politics is a death thing, I, I think it's time for Nigerians to come to realize that politics remain the only mechanism through which we produce government, through which we produce our leaders. So it's high time for people to get involved in the political system and use their influence to rally around, to get the right leadership to address some of this problem. Because at the end of the day, it's all boys down to leaders and the budgets they have for the people. So if the budget is faulty, if the mindset of leadership is faulty, what you have is just what you're going to have. So energy sequence, uh, production quality, transportation network, and both of you, all of the 20th century infrastructures we have currently that can't even address the issue of 21st century we are confronted with, uh, goes to show that uh, we have to do something to look into our leadership. Just like uh, the very as intelligent as and guessy people have, uh, Mr. Chuku actually said, uh, there's need for us to also beef security, which I've also as in gave reference to, because without security, especially in the agro belt belts of Nigeria, where a lot of these crops are produced, uh, that simply means you're going to be having increase in the price of uh, agricultural produce. And don't forget that as a country, we spend about 56.65% on uh, food items alone. And if you look into that alone, you get to understand that it's need for us to strengthen our security network. And maybe we also just need to invest more in helping Nigerians to lead better life. Because at the end of the day, the insecurity we face is a function of the mindset of Nigerians. So you can invest in kinetic resources and build strong defense system. But at the end of the day, the mind of Nigerians are not in good shape because they're not happy with the government. You're still going to have massive insecurity and those infrastructures, those kinetic resources will basically be wasted killing as in gets the Nigerians to kill Nigerians. So, I'm just of the view that time for us to actually start looking forward is now. We need to start investing in the right capital infrastructure, building the right energy portfolio, ensuring that we invest massively in our transition system. Go across the country, the pothole, especially in south part of Nigeria, is just speak people. And how do you expect farmers to move their goods from local communities down to urban centers? These are all issues that drive the cost of goods and services. Then 
CBN also needs to do more to expand credit facility and solutions to entrepreneurs so that that way they can actually get the resources they need to be able to drive the business objective. Don't forget that the graduate, for instance, you, there are three things you can actually do. It's either you actually get a job, but when you don't have a job, it's better to either further your career or start a business. And if you don't have the resources to set up business you need, that's simply mean you'll be able to contribute meaningfully to the economic margin. And for us, it's better finance position. There's need for us to invest more into right. providing Samuel. the capital solution that's in which they need to be able to drive the business vision into reality. All right. Um, Johnson, Chuku, let's bring you in. Um, there's a, a myth that once prices increase in Nigeria, they never come back down. Uh, if you've, uh, of course, looked across market prices for oil and for cereal and for, uh, you know, canned, uh, canned uh, food and some, of, some very random things, um, these prices are figures that we've never seen before. Um, you know, uh, sardine, for example, that used to be about 250 naira is currently selling above 600 naira. Um, there are certain things that Nigerians will now describe as luxury that, you know, a couple of years ago were very basic. Um, so, Mr. Johnson, Chuku, would you expect that there is a possibility, or is there a possibility that these prices will ever go back to where they were a few years ago? Well, uh, what I would say is that it is a myth in Nigeria, but it, it has, uh, we've has had instances where some countries have witnessed uh, deflation in their uh, in, in in their country, and um, we saw prices reverse to even below what they used to be. Uh, but Nigeria's situation is a bit unique, a unique in the sense that we've seen consistently over year in year out an increase in the population without a commercial increase in productivity. So that means that the level of productive uh, productivity is declining, uh, while as population is increasing. And the simple logic of uh, inflation is that when too much money is pursuing fewer goods or few goods, so for you to have a dis de deflation, you need to produce more goods and services, uh, more than the money uh, increase in money in circulation. That would not witness that. One of the factors that is driving uh, import induced inflation is because because we are a, an import dependent country. We have consistently in our currency de depreciate or devalue against foreign currencies. So as long as that trend continues, it becomes difficult to, for you to price imported goods at a Naira value lower than what it used to be. Uh, if you used to exchange Naira uh, about four or five years ago at 198 Naira to a dollar, and today you are exchanging at official rate at 413 Naira to a dollar, any good you bought for one dollar then would have been costing you 107 naira. Today, it will cost you 413 naira, assuming you're using official exchange rates. Yes. Then it becomes impossible for you to have that same good, uh, good even if the price has not moved from where the exporting country, for you to still have it reversed to 197 naira. So for us to ever have a reversal of inflation rates, we have to locally produce more goods and services as to lead to local uh, deflation in our economy. And then you also have to see an appreciation of uh, your local currency against foreign currencies to the extent that they will reverse to what they used to be. You and I know that based on our current macroeconomic conditions, those factors seem too far-fetched or too unrealistic to for anyone to expect that we should see a reversal of exchange rate to maybe 100, 118 naira per dollar, uh, as we had in the uh, mid 20, uh, like 2025, 2005, 2006, it was about 118 naira per dollar. Uh, for us to achieve that, we must have a major boost in our foreign exchange earnings beyond export of crude. The economy will take some time to achieve that. We have not even put the structures in place to lead to such level of direction of foreign exchange earnings as to strengthen the currency back to what it was uh, maybe 10, 20 years ago. Neither are we producing enough goods and services as a country as to lead to deflation where you have so much goods and the sellers of these goods are begging people to buy them at lower prices. Uh, and you may have one or two instances where one or two products have a uh, decline in uh, market prices, but generally at the general level, the macro level, that would be a, a total of that payment to explain that. Okay. Um, Johnson Chuku, I would also bring uh, Richard Inouye to this. Uh, some persons have complained about artificial inf inflation, and I'm asking, can the government use 
uh, price control mechanism, uh, you know, to actually stop that? Or should we allow the market forces of demand and supply, you know, to continue to play? Well, first, let me start by saying the chief of... of control of the Nigerian economy to a very large extent is the president. So uh, I think the likes of uh, the late priced uh, Bamidele Aturu basically sued the federal government then to court and the minister of, uh, of, of petroleum then Alice Madi came to court uh, saying that government can't hands off totally when it comes to price control. Subsidies for me is a global as an issue where government across the globe subsidize certain products and that for me is, is price control. So I think what we need is for us to actually manage both our price control mechanism as well as also creating room for market forces to also some of this as in issues. But on the overall, there's no way any country can actually run without some level of subsidy which in the real sense also intervenes uh, when it comes to the issue of rising price. So we just have to find out the right policy mix uh, okay. to see how we can actually bring price control at the same time also creating the necessary conditions for market forces to actually rise when the need arises for us to actually have an economy that works for all. All right, let, let's bring in uh, Johnson Chuku. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Do you agree with him or you share different thoughts? Okay, I think uh, he dwelt on uh, uh, on uh, subsidy, uh, uh, which uh, he said that every economy government subsidizes one of the some of the what he considers as critical to the economic uh, development of the society. Uh, but I think your question is whether government can introduce price controls uh, as a, me a, a mechanism to reduce inflation rate or to moderate price price levels. Uh, I, I know that price controls have never worked anywhere in the world. Uh, the basic thing that when you try to control price of goods, you are not controlling supply or demand. You push that commodity to the parallel market or the black market where people pay prices, where people pay premium beyond what the market prices would have offered them. And it's very simple. This is how it works. Uh, if we have, as a country, we are demanding 10 million units of a particular product, and we're only producing 5 million units of it, and the demand, daily demand is 10 million units, and you want to put a price cap on that product so that you 10 people, 10 million people want to buy it. Uh, what will happen is that because the people who are selling there are no fools, the people will take the product out of supply and take it to the private market. And people are going to buy those products at much higher prices than they would have bought them if you had left them out. But if you leave them in the open market, what you call market equilibrium will set in. Maybe instead of 10 million people wanting to buy it, prices will go up to such an extent that only 5 million people want to buy it. Because only 5, 5 million people can afford it because there are actually 5 million on supply. But if you say if the 10 million people that desire of it, which is what you call uh, difference between effective demand and uh, and uh, want. People that want an item would ordinarily not, may not have the resources to buy it. If you put the price cap on them, they will struggle to buy it. But if you allow market forces to determine the price, you have effective demand. Only those who have the resources to buy that product will buy it. And then that will set a market price or what you call a equilibrium price. But once you introduce force to say, this product is available. I mean, we've seen this in the past. There was a time under the current uh, president when he was a military head of state. He they put, imposed price con there was a price control, but they put prices on food items like milk and all those things. What happened? Those milk vanished from the shop floors. And people have to go to the back end of the market to say, okay, this milk that should have bought for 50 kobo, I'm ready to buy it for one naira because it can't even find it on the, floor, on the floor of the market or the shop floors. So market price control can only work if the government has a way of boosting supply to meet demand. So you must either do what? Constrain demand, which is a very difficult thing to do if it's something people really want. But the most appropriate thing is stimulate increase in production so that the value quantity of goods produced will meet the demand of the society. And that's when prices will moderate. I had talked about this earlier, that the best way to tame inflation is to increase the level of production in an economy so that the quantity of goods produced, services produced will increase beyond the demand of the people. And then those who are selling those products will be begging people to come and buy the products. And the market power will move to the uh, consumers who will now be bargaining for lower prices. But as you have low production, market power remains with the supplier who will determine the prices that they will sell the goods. All right. Uh, 
Richard Inoyo and John Sinchuku. Thank you both for being a part of the conversation this morning and speaking about Nigeria's inflation rate. Uh, and of course, uh, looking forward to other very interesting conversations with you too. Have a very beautiful Tuesday. All right, Thank many you. thanks for Our joining pleasure. us. We appreciate it. And that's where we will, of course, be saying goodbye this morning. If you missed out on any of uh, well, our very interesting conversations, remember where to catch up. We will work towards having a conversation on the um, NSAS panel, uh, judicial panel report, uh, hopefully to, um, sometime tomorrow. And of course, also speak about Itunu Baba Lola, who, of course, is a Nigerian who died in an Ivorian jail. We'll speak about that very likely tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, catch us up on uh, social media. On Plus TV, it's at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram as well as YouTube. Do have a great morning. I am Messi Boko. And I am Osao Gi.